I'm just so excited that we found something that fits so well here for $35. Well, okay, my bad. Um, look what we found for $35 on Facebook Marketplace. It is an old, like, antique, I'm assuming antique, um, little desk. Because, well, you see, what happens on the kitchen table is like, well, you know, that sort of thing. So. We found this teeny desk. I mean, it's not teeny, but it fits well on a small wall. It's 26 inches from left to right. And we're planning to put my painting stuff inside so that... It gets it here. Yes. Paint. We gotta get you a lamp. Ooh, that's a good idea. And what I was thinking was getting some little, like, very, like, temporary, it just, like, sticks on the wall. I have to go upstairs and see if I have any. Ooh, I love the look of that. And I think I'll just pull that chair over because I'm comfortable in that chair. Let's see if the drawer works. <gasps> Magical! That's awesome. Okay, so what I was thinking was I could put some of my, not all cacti, but any of my paintings and like do them all the way to the ceiling. I love it. We'll see what happens. Way cool. Ooh, this is so cute. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to dust it and clean it. All right, freshly cleaned and full of character. I love it. So I just had another thought. This opens up another option for places to do my vest. So maybe I will pull my vest over here. I can plug it into here. And I find when I have to do things like my vest on a daily basis, it's good to mix it up where I do my vest. Some people have one specific comfy chair that they like to sit in when they do the therapy, the vest. I find it's most comfortable for me flat on a bed, like I'm sitting, like my legs are folded in front of me, sitting on the bed or on a comfortable kitchen chair. The couch, like it feels like I'm getting eaten up and then I feel like I have to like sit up differently. And so for me, it's most comfortable in a kitchen chair, a cushioned kitchen chair, might I add. So having another little space to do my vest will be good. It'll be good to mix it up a little bit. And yeah. So now the exciting part, putting my supplies in these little organizing area. So here's what I do. Oh look, these are from cleaning the desk. It is truly an antique with antique dirt and all. Oh yeah the pumpkins. I tried to do a photo shoot. I'll post those pictures sometime soon. They are pretty hysterical. Mm -hmm. Let's just say it wasn't picture perfect, but it was, it was us and it was fun. Okay, so here's what I do. I mix up a few different colors of green. Um, I do some blue and yellow. I do some blue, yellow, and purple. I do some blue, yellow, and red to make it a bit darker. And then I do some of these two colors of green mixed with some more yellow or whatever. Um, but you see this situation, you see this situation, which is like when Mr. Cactus falls over. It's just, it's gonna be really good to reclaim our kitchen table. But once I have my colors, this is what I was actually gonna say. Once I have my colors on my palette, and it dries up like this, guess what? You can still use it. You just take, let's see, take some water and reconstitute it. And then you're ready to paint again. So I'm gonna transfer all of this. All right, are you ready? I have some flowers for inspiration. A 
couple of little uh, succulents and cacti, a few of my own cacti that I've painted. And this is in process, so you can kind of see the difference. These have the green, but they do not have the accents yet, the darker lines and prickles and that sort of thing. So I decided for now what to put in this main part. I will put my two palettes that I use. I've been using this one for the pot color, pots, the flower pots. This one for the green colors and my paints. These were given to me from a friend uh, maybe six years ago. I think that she had really high quality paints because when I wet my brush to, to pick up some of the paint, it's very vibrant. So these are six years old and dried out and crusty and guess what? They still work fabulous. But I used to paint with the Crayola watercolor palette probably from the dollar store that I was given when I was in the hospital. So like anything works, you can make anything work. All right, I have other paints, like I have brand new palettes of paint, but these are what I'm using right now and I'm enjoying it and I'm going with it. And then I have my little bottle of water, not to drink, just for painting. And I've been using the ruler and the pencil really lightly. I don't know if you guys can see it. I think you can, just so I can stay within my parameters and extra paint brushes the two paint brushes that i'm using this one is the one i've been using mostly and then this is the marker a little stabilo marker that i use for the accents and then my palette knife or block paper knife whatever since this paper is all glued together on purpose, they leave this open spot so I can slide the knife in and crack the top piece of paper off and there it is. So that's what's in there. And then in the drawer, I have two extra palettes, my two little squirty paints. And then this is the palette that I used almost exclusively for the last however many years, six years or so. Oh yeah, see, there's another one of those paintbrushes. But, and I love this, I have nothing against this. I just have been enjoying trying something different when using that one. And then another thing of paper. I have more painting supplies right here. This is like a little wooden box we bought a few years ago at Habitat for Humanity for $1. And I will put this in the closet. See, I have like an even bigger watercolor paint palette here. I don't think I've ever even taken paint off of it. Okay, ready? Oh yeah, it's pristine. But it's ready for painting whenever I need it. This is actually really good because I haven't painted, I don't paint very frequently. And part of that is, pulling all the supplies out and having it all over messy on the table and all of the, it just takes a lot of energy to get it all out. This will foster an environment that it is easy to paint because all that I'll have to do is flip this down and start painting. I'm just so excited that we found something that fits so well here for $35. Yay! Well, look at that. Would you even believe it? Found this on the table. More paint brushes. I think I will put it in the desk drawer right now, for now. If I find that I'm not reaching for this, like ever, or maybe I reach in there just to get one certain paintbrush, I think that I'll end up taking them I'll put the paintbrush I'm reaching for in there and then I'll put the excess in the closet when I put this in the closet. I've found that it is super helpful. I think I learned this from Do It On A Dime. Put one item in each section when possible and to have a one-step 
process to access something. So, okay. So, what that would mean is, in order to keep things organized and easy to put away, um, putting the knife in this spot, because I know that that's where it's always gonna go, and I don't have to fish around for it if I put it in this side. I simply have one item there. Now, I'm gonna keep my most used paintbrushes together and that's okay with me. So it's just one step to get into here. Like, okay, one step to open the door and then another step to get into here. Um, that's like a little more, it's a little harder to reliable, reliably um, put things away every time. I guess it's just a way of making it most sustainably easy to put things away and you know where to find them. I'm gonna figure out how to, I'm gonna roll the vest over there and see if I can figure out how to con configure it to fit over there and see if that makes sense or not. I'm not sure it's gonna fit over there. Maybe this would really bother Peter. If we scooted the couch so that that painting is not centered, if I scooch the couch that way. So I don't wanna make his brain wanna explode every time he looked at an off-center couch. So either I leave the vest out this way or I don't know, we'll see. I'll ask him when he gets home, see what he thinks. He's on a walk. You wanna check it out? So get. I'm not sure if the vest will fit there. I was thinking we could scoot the couch down, but then I wouldn't want to mess with the symmetry of the <laughs> situation. You can, you, can, you can do that. No, I don't. Well, if you wanted to keep the vest over here, you just slide your chair in, slide it there, and then when you're doing your vest, you can slide it out. But that's like a two-step two process. True, true. You got to make it sustainably doable. Oh, your knees don't fit. Don't Do my knees fit? We might need well, I curl up point. my legs. We might need... Although, when you're sitting at the desk. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. You don't actually go, oh my gosh, this is perfect. I bet you're gonna use it too. Yeah. No dinner plan, no problem. Do not fret, because I had a bag of frozen homemade chicken broth. I had an onion. I chopped it up. I had some purple cabbage. I chopped it up. I have some stewed tomatoes I'm going to chop up and put in here. Frozen veggies. This bag of frozen veggies. And some frozen sliced celery that I had frozen a few months ago. And it's perfect because... I bought these for Peter today, and he will enjoy having those with his soup. I am still considering putting some spatzels in. I considered putting potatoes in, but we will just have to see. I'm gonna let it simmer for a while and just see what happens. Veggie soup. I gotta chop those up. I just remembered that I had kale. Wow, looks like I had a little spill of kale there. So I put some kale in, and then I found some ground beef that was already cooked. And it's just a little bit, but it will be great. So vegetable beef soup! Look at that! Think quick! Woo! Yum! I didn't know you might want to put some spicy peppers in. I did. I thought you were making like chicken noodle soup or something. It turned into vegetable beef. Oh my gosh. Yum. And? As always. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night, Holly boy.